Hi there, this is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films and welcome to part 5 of my Dardenne Brothers series. Today we're going all the way back to 2008 to have a brief discussion on The Silence of Lorna. Again, this is a DVD, part of the Artificial Eye Dardenne Brother collection on DVD, which I would recommend you picking up. Um, even though I think three of these are on Criterion Blu-ray, but I think they're Region A Criterion, as far as I'm aware. Um, this one stars um, Arta Dubroche, Jeremy Renier, who was in L'Enfant and La Promesse, um, Fabrizio Rongioni, who was in Rosetta, um, and a couple of others. Um, it also features um, Morgan Marianne, who was in L'Enfant and of course Olivier Gourmet turns up, he's only just in one scene. I might as well get this out of the way. Um, the Dardens obviously sell out in this film because they do have a little bit of score music in the last scene of the film. I mean, what are they doing? Um, there is source music, but this is the first time they've, used, they've actually used a score even though it's just in the last, literally, like, 30 seconds of the film. And when Olivier Gourmet does turn up, he's not wearing his glasses. I mean, it's ridiculous. He's the Eric Morecambe of French cinema, and they don't have him wearing glasses. It's like... So that's that's quite difficult to get over. Um, and also, this one didn't win the Palme d'Or. That's, we're so used to the Dardens winning the Palme d'Or. Um, but that aside... Let's talk about the film. It was interesting, I was watching a video on YouTube where somebody was, um, I can't remember who it was, um, but somebody was talking about why you really need to hook an audience within 10 to 15 minutes, or I think it was somebody who programmed films for a festival, so he watched a lot of films, and if you don't engage the audience within 10 to 15 minutes and tend just to like switch off um, and the Dardens well for me at least always engage me by not telling me anything and it's just such a simple technique if you're familiar with the Dardens if you've been watching this series so far you'll know that they just drop you in a situation they don't give you backstory they don't tell you in the first 10 minutes what's going on, who everybody is. They literally just drop you in. It's such a simple technique. But they hook me in every time. So we're just dropped in and we meet Lorna. The first image of the film is about money, which is a throughput. She is Albanian originally, but she is in... A sham marriage with Claudie, played by Jeremy Rennie, who is a drug addict who wants to get clean, um, but he has kind of bounced backwards and forwards from getting clean to using again. And this has been enabled by a character um, called Fabio, played by Fabrizio Rongoni. And So she is married to Claudie, but then once they get a divorce, Claudie will get money and Fabio um, works for a Russian. So essentially Fabio and Lorna have bought Claudie so Lorna can become a Belgian citizen. And then once she becomes a Belgian citizen, Fabio and the Russians want to by her so she can get married to the Russian but she has a boyfriend Sokol and she thinks she's going to get open a nice snack bar 
shop. Um, and that will be her life sorted. Um, but once she is divorced from Claudie, um, debts have to be paid. Um, I'm not going to go into specific plot things, but that's the general setup. It's about money that can obviously buy things, but it can also buy people and the exploitation of people, the exploitation of people's dreams and how far people will go to obtain those dreams. Again, this is set in this Darden post-industrial Belgium where morals and everything is pretty much just ruled by money and how far people actually take it. It's a wonderful performance um, um, by Arta Dobroski. Um, at some point she has kind of feelings for Claudie, um, which complicates matters even further um, when she thinks that perhaps um, she's pregnant by somebody. Again, I'm not going to get into the details. But this is just another stunning film, um, apart from obviously the use of music, unbelievable, um, and Olivia Gourmet's glasses, or lack thereof his glasses, which is, that's what we watch a Dardenne film for. Um, again, this the Dardennes don't mess about, they kind of, there's lines in it like, you know, when they're trying to work out how she can get a divorce quicker, but everything has to go according to plan, they don't want her to be divorced and then them to get rid of Claudie too quickly. Um, but then she takes it in her own hands because she just wants it done. So it's like she's trying to get Claudie to beat her up so she'll get a divorce quicker. Um, she feigns injuries herself to try and get divorced quicker. And of course, Claudie, as he says, you know, he may be a junkie, he may be a thief, you know, but it doesn't hit women. Um, there's just, again, the Dardens are focused in on ritual, what people do every day. But again, it's just another... It's funny when you watch Dardenne films and then you go watch something else, especially something that's mainstream, it's almost like two completely different art forms. And again, I've said before in this series, the Dardens have kind of rocketed up my big board of directors. Um, their films shouldn't work because again, they're distanced but they're involved. Um, again, there's moments where you get strange emotional reactions but because they don't play by the rules of conventional cinema as far as doing big emotional scores or whatever, your emotions are actually earned in Dardenne films. They're not cheapened by the manipulation of score and um, acting technique or anything like that. And they do, because you're hooked in so quickly because you want to know what's happening you know you you're hooked into these characters they are amazing at building an atmosphere of dread an atmosphere of something bad's going to happen um without using those cinematic tropes that we've seen 85,000 times before of creating an atmosphere through certain camera work, through certain musical cues. The Dardens don't do any of that. So 
you just feel that what you get out of the Darden film, the emotion that you put in, is earned. It's not cheapened or manipulated. Again, um, this release has an interview with Arta Dubrosche sorry, for 15 minutes. Um, she can speak a lot of languages. And a 37 minute interview with the Dardens, which is absolutely fascinating. I mean, they're an odd couple of guys. They are twins, so that might explain it. Um, they're both balding because all their hair exploded off their head because they're too brainy. Um, you know, they talk about the rehearsal period. They tend to rehearse for like six weeks in the sets. So when they actually get the crew together, they're not wasting the crew's time. Again, they have a kind of team, um, the crew that have worked with them up to this point, pretty much on all of their films. They are fascinating guys to listen to. Obviously, they kind of riff off each other. Um, again, they talk about certain scenes and plot points, which I'm not going to talk about. You need to go and watch the film yourself. Because again, I think what makes the Dardenne films so good is you're going on a journey of discovery with the characters because they drop you in at the start and they leave you sometimes breathless at the end you know you're going on that journey you are a passenger in these characters um, adventures throughout the film um, and they just do that so well um, by not necessarily being that conventional. Um, so I would highly recommend The Science of Lorna, just like I've highly recommended the other four films. Um, yeah, for me they're all, so far they're all f at least four out of five star films. Um, and looking forward to part six. So please let me know if you've seen The Science of Lorna and what you think of it. And what's your favourite Dardenne out of the first five. And hopefully you will join me for part six of the Dardennes. So thanks very much for watching. This is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films. Sing farewell.